I want to open it up with just some pure excellence. Um, Kylian Mbappe scored a goal against um, Olympic Lyon, I think, for a cup. I think it might be the French Cup the other day. An incredible run that, um, I don't know, you, you know, like, um, you don't really get the... I think sports is one of those things where, like, like most things, I think, in life, isn't it, right? You you don't appreciate fashion until you, you someone actually someone actually asks you to like I don't know to pattern cut right or to make a dress or even just to kind of put together a curtain right it's those kind of difficult things you don't really realize how how hard they are until you have to do it or when you have to go to like a life drawing class and you all suddenly get it's funny when you go to a life drawing class that you get more self conscious about your ability to write than the person that's standing in front of you stark naked, isn't it? Really, after like the first five minutes, oh look, that person's Willie, oh she got boobs. You know what I mean, that kind of wears off, and then suddenly you start to become self conscious about your ability to draw, and you start to hide it. And then you, there's always somebody in your class. I've never not been to a life drawing class where there's not one fucking, you know, Pablo Picasso to your right, just absolutely slaying it, right? Just drawing freehand closing his eyes while smoking a zoo and just fucking smashing it and you're like look at my thing it looks like a stick man um so i think football and sports are football football specifically is one of the things where like you know i've played football for most of my life it was the first sport i kind of got into competitively i played it to a pretty decent level uk standards considering like you know i'm pretty sure if i went to the states i'd probably be semi-professional so i'm i'm pretty good at it right but when you watch for football, especially on a professional level, no matter how much stick you might give some people in your team who you think are crap, you're still very aware that these guys are at the top apex, right? They're like the 0.01% of athletes who have been able to kind of break through, especially in the UK where like everyone plays football. Same, I guess it would be the same in America, right? With basketball. Everyone plays basketball. So it's probably a lot harder to make it in America as a basketball player than it would be anywhere else. And it also means that if you do make it, you are really, really, really good. Um, you know, uh, put, put aside your height, you know, put aside like your physical attributes that might kind of, you know, um, give a bit of an advantage. When it comes to pure skill, you have to be really good at it. So I like that this clip kind of illustrates just how far up the levels killing Mbappe is. I think he's like, what, 21 or 20 or something, right? It, ridiculously young how old he is. And considering as well, footballers get, you know, they he, especially his peak as a striker will come much later in his career, especially if he keeps himself in top physical condition. And he's able to kind of transition from like the player he is now with all... Because I, lo I love to see what Kylian Mbappe would, is going to look like once he gets a bit older, once his pace is not there as much as it was now. He hasn't got that electrifying kind of burst of pace. Because like, I remember Van Persie was the same, right? Then he got a few injuries and his pace kind of left him. So then he had to kind of adapt to his game and kind of change the way he plays and become like the quintessential number nine, right? Scoring tap-ins, uh, scoring goals inside the, inside the box, loads of more headers. Um, I'd love to see what he kind of develops into going forward because I think that's what Samuel Eto'o was able to do too because I kind of think they have the same sort of like like gangly kind of striking um um uh, kind of uh, way of playing in that respect right they're always kind of pulling out to the flanks driving on e dri driving on in the inside confusing defenders with their runs um of course electrifying pace from start to finish i still remember that um some samuel Otto goal he scored for real betis against real madrid that time like just an incredible thing but just look at this kind of goal from Kylian mbappe and just uh, marvel at the fucking pure brilliance of the man right that he's able to kind of do such a thing um at this such high level right it's just incredible to watch really to be honest um see if i can get up on here so it's the video right He's running from the from from inside his area, so he kind of so again describing it from people listening to the podcast. He picks it up well within his area, probably say I don't know three quarters of the way inside his own area. He turns, faces the defender, gives him a step over, which is not even really a step over. It's more so like just like a feint, just to kind of give himself the ability to kind of push the ball forward and essentially just run past the defender who tries to put his elbow out to actually block him. Like, he wants to actually just, just to take him out because he knows if he, as soon as Kylian Mbappe pushes that ball past him, he's off and he's, he's, uh, he's away. And that was one of the things I hated about, because I remember when I was younger, I used to be a winger. So sometimes there'd be occasions where I would have to play right back to kind of cover somebody or maybe someone got sent off or whatever, right? The first option for you to kind of cover the wing backs because the wing back, I think, is one of the roles, is one of the positions that no one really wants to play. People don't mind playing as a winger because I guess you've got the ability to stand on the, on the wing, go up and down. For the most part, just go up and not really defend central midfield is a bit more of a exposing place too because you know everyone can see when you're tracking back or marking your man or filling the spaces and center back you know you don't really want to be there because if you get skinned the person's through on goal so wing back is one of those positions where it looks appealing but it's obviously it's, it's also very very evident and very very um you can obviously tell when you're getting absolutely ripped to pieces so i never wanted to play there but 
the times that I did play there, the, the times that you felt like you were going to die was when you were playing against a winger that was an actual winger that could actually just push it past and just run. And it always made you look fucking horrible because by the time you got up to... Because rec- there will be two or three occasions you might get up and recover, right? And smash the ball out to the stands. But as you're getting up, you're like... <gasps> It took everything out of you to do that. So he's well aware of it. He's like, oh, okay. Because he does this every day, right? This is his, this is his bread and butter, running up and down that line. So for you, he, he, he notices it. I, I'm similar, it's like a, I guess it's similar to like a fight, right? The fighter, once you're kind of tied up, you can kind of feel your body, feel your heart rate, feel how you're breathing. Um, and you can kind of see the kind of fight dying out of you. And then from there, he knows how when to turn the pace and when not to. Same with being a fullback, right? And playing against a really good winger. He can see it in your eyes and you're gone. And I guess this is a good indication of it. I'm pretty sure after this occasion, when Kylian Mbappe ran into that defender again, he just probably, you know, retreated and ran away. But it's, just, it's an amazing run, man. He just pushes the ball past the defender here over the halfway line. Now he's facing up to two defenders. He's got one on the inside. And he does the fate. My favourite, this is one of my favourite moves in football. And I think Wayne Rooney really used to do it quite a lot towards the end of his career. The kind of run where you're driving in from the left-hand side, driving diagonally into the box. And then you sort of like push it to your right hand side of your foot as if you're going to shoot and you kind of flick it on the inside, which makes the defender usually uh, get wrong foot with a golf balance. And then you kind of strike it either with your left foot to the opposite corner or you poke it with your right foot, which I'm kidding about end up doing here. It's just one of my favorite moves in football, man. So, so easy, but so, so effective. Boom, chops in, bang. It flies past the defender, the goalkeeper in the flash. And I think that's, that's the thing that I've noticed quite often with them professional football players yes the decision making is impeccable right they always seem to know when to make the right pass they always let go of the ball just when it should be like that's the thing you see a difference when you go to watch like sunday league or saturday league football you see a lot of good players but they don't necessarily know when to make the right choice and because they don't make the right choice the person i guess the ball next has to make the right choice and it kind of you know it's a kind of domino effect and i also noticed too whenever it comes to shooting they take too long like there's too many touches, like everything's like one, everything they're setting up, setting up, setting up, setting up, and then hitting it. Sometimes it doesn't matter because, you know, no one's going to catch you if you're really quick in the Saturday league football and you're in the box already, you might end up scoring. But I think in top level football, you just can't do that because everyone's really good. Like, right, the goalkeepers are some of the best in the world. They'll come out running and take out your legs. Defenders are really, defenders really enjoy defending, so they will take joy out of smashing you to pieces. So you have to really... Once you get into the area, like every, no, actually, even the ball coming to you, towards the area, is set up in a way where it can come across your body, you can open yourself up, or you already have a vision of where the butt, where the flipping goal is, and you can just lace it into the direction that you want to hit it in. So you're not even taking a touch. So the defender hasn't got time to even pick up and get the ball to you. Because once you take a touch and you kind of stumble your feet to kind of get onto it, the defender's got time to make up the space, and then the chance is already gone. But I think that's one thing you see quite often with top players. They just, they just, it's, it's all, it's all like, it's all like, um, you know, it reminds of it reminds me of like American football drills. It's all kind of premeditated. It's all stuff you've been kind of drilling in a training ground. Like sort of Ronaldo used to do with step overs, like boom, 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 one, two, three, boom to the left, push it out, bang, shoot. It's something that you do consistently all the time. It's sort of like the um, Iron Robin uh, cutting into his left foot and then bending it to the opposite corner. It's the same move every time, as you know, um, what's his face said um, about. Uh, you know what's his name? The fighter. Well, I've got the name. Uh, he said about it, right? Same every time, but it works really, really well. Look at that! Boom, bang, straight in the bottom corner. So yeah, terrific thing to see from there. Um, yeah, what a what a great um, what a great entry there from uh, the old Killian Mbappe or 